Hey, what's up? It's Mark at Alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today is video number three in our Ecto series. Before we did an overview and then a kind of graphical explanation of the difference between what a repository and uh, active record pattern is. If you haven't seen those videos yet, I suggest you check them out in the cards above. And this time we're going to actually build our new project. Uh, we'll start a new project, I should say, set up a brand new mix repo uh, or mix project, and we'll add an Ecto repo to it and we'll connect to the repo, create a database and uh, get that much of everything set up and working. So we'll start with mix, not Phoenix, just a mix new and the name of this project is Linkly. We need dash dash SUP for supervisor. This app will need an OTP supervisor. So we'll go to Visual Studio Code now, just code Linkly. And in this new repo, we have lib, we have test, and then we have the, the default files for mix, git ignore, and formatter. We don't have a config file, although if you're running an older version of Elixir, you might have it. Uh, at this point, by default, the config files are not created because it's assumed that a bare mix project is going to be a library. We'll start by going to mix.exs and we'll add our dependencies to our project. We need two things here. Basically, we need the Ecto dependency, Ecto SQL, and then we need Postgrex. I'm using version 3.1 of Ecto SQL. I suggest if you're following this, uh, this tutorial, you use the exact same versions that I do because then it, you won't hit as many confusing issues and you can always upgrade after you understand what's going on. It'll be much easier then. Save this and instantly get a whole bunch of red squiggles. That's because I added a dependency, but the dependency hasn't uh, hasn't been downloaded yet. So do mix depths dot get to download the code for both of these dependencies. Works just like it would with npm or Ruby gems, something like that. And now that we've got them, the dependency or these squiggles should disappear. Now we need to create the database repo that will be inside of lib and then the name of your app. We've already got this application file. We'll add another one called repo, repo.ex. The name of this module is Linkly, which is the name of my project, dot repo, nope, dot repo. And then we need to use ecto.repo use as a macro. So this is doing more than an import as well as pulling in uh, new files. We're actually pull or as well as pulling in functions, we're actually executing code. So that changes the behavior of everything else subsequent to that use in this file. So if you ever see something strange happening in a file with a use, or maybe some syntax you don't understand or some DSL, it's possible that that is because of the use at the top of the file. Um, we need to pass this a couple of options. First, we need to tell it the name of the OTP app. So OTP app is going to be the name of our app. So just Linkly. And then we need to give it an adapter. So the adapter is ecto.repo, or not, not a repo, ecto.adapters.postgrex. And there we go. Save that. That's all we need for the repo. Then the application has a supervision tree. There are children that the app supervises. One of those is going to be our repo, which is for communicating with the database, as I said. It's a linkly.repo. We'll add that in there so that when we start up our app, it will also fire up everything we need to communicate with the database. And at this point, we should be able to compile everything but we shouldn't be able to actually run the application. The reason for that is because we don't have the configuration files here. So we, we actually don't know uh, what 
the username or the password or any of that is for the database. I'm going to just create a directory for that first, though. Make dir config. Now let's try running the app. So mix, uh, sorry, iex s mix. So this will run it interactively in iex, which is the REPL for Elixir. And you see we have this uh, bad database connection here. We don't we don't have the the data that we need as expected. So we'll close the terminal and create a new file in this config directory I just made. We'll call the first one config.exs. This is the top level config file. This needs to bring in uh, another macro that's called mix.config. You basically just put this at the top of all your config files and then they're config files. And we need to set the ecto repos for this project. So I config linkly ecto repos. You can have more than one database connected, which is why it's repos. And then we put this inside a list. So linkly.repo. And then at the bottom of the main config, it's customary and a good idea to import the config for the specific mix environment you're in. So this could be uh, dev, or it could be test, or it could be prod, or it could be some other thing that you defined that's totally custom. Um, so here, this mix.env is going to be either dev, prod, or test. And the file that the configuration is going to be in is going to be dev, prod, or test.exs. We'll save that here. Actually, put a, a new line at the end. Save it, and we'll make a config, or we'll make a dev.exs, and this will be for the development configuration, which is all we'll set up for today. In this one, we need use mix.config because it's a config file. Then after that, we need to set up the database information for the repo. So linkly.repo. And I'm just going to go with the defaults, depending on whether if you, yeah, I mean, you've got to have Postgres installed, um, depending on whether if you have the default uh, Postgres user and password of Postgres, which you never should on production, but you very well may on dev. Um, database is going to be a new database. We've got to create a new one for this app. We'll call it Linkly Dev. Then in you know, test, we can make a linkly test database and prod, same deal, linkly prod. Host name is going to be local host. So that's why it's not really a concern that we've got these default passwords, our default password, default name. And that's the only thing we need for this one. So we'll save that file. And now we should actually be able to create and destroy a database. So we'll try mix ecto.create. And we've created a new database repo. And mix ecto.drop. We've gotten rid of it. Let's create it again and start up our app. OK, so now we have no errors. And now we could actually query things in the database or add things to the database. Although, of course, before we do that, we need to add some schemas. We'll need schemas for the users, for the links, like the URLs of them, and then for the tags and some relations between all those things. So we'll just stop this video here. If you found it useful, definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel because you will get more like it very soon. And next up will be the schemas themselves. See you next time.